Joe's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, this is the current situation with my oxyacetylene uh, cart setup that I have right here. About 25, 30 years ago, I purchased what would be just the cart, some Victor gauges, a hose, a cutting torch, some tips, a spark lighter, a miscellaneous kit to get started. Uh, with oxyacetylene. The only thing I didn't get with it were bottles. But I bought those separately and at the time I bought 50 cubic foot bottles which are much smaller and shorter than my current situation. The problem that I have with this cart right here, it, and it, it seems to work good, everything is good, but it is it's horribly unbalanced. So it's hard, it's hard to maneuver. Uh, as soon as you pull it back, it wants to fall back heavy this way, or if you lighten it up a little bit, it wants to fall. It's just very unbalanced, very difficult to, to move around, although it's not like I'm rolling around too far in my shop right here. But still, it's been a problem that I've had uh, since I've had this thing for 30 years, and I've always wanted to change it one way, shape, or form. So finally, that day has come, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to modify this cart to make it much more ergonomical, much more functional, at least for me. Okay, well here it is, check this out. This is an old abandoned hand truck. Uh, I actually found this in the trash. Somebody was gonna throw this away. Uh, it's obviously missing the tires and wheels. Uh, there's some issues with it. Uh, I don't know, some things seem to be broken or, or misplaced. And so when I saw this, I thought this was a perfect opportunity to make uh, the cart that I've been looking for for a long time. One thing I like about this one right here that's a little bit different than most hand trucks, and that's making me lead to believe this is a little bit older than the current ones, is the base itself is super wide. It, it's wider than most. As a matter of fact, it's actually about a half inch wider than my existing cart is right now, so that's gonna accommodate the bottles a little bit more. Uh, of course, the bottles that I have now currently are uh, over 126 cubic feet bottles, both of them. And I originally started, if you remember I said, uh, about 50 cubic foot bottles. So the bottles are more than twice the size they are now, a lot more bigger, a lot more heavier, and this is going to accommodate them uh, much better. One of the things that we're, also, that we're gonna do to this thing is also put a set of chains on the bottom half and near the top. So I'll be able to secure the bottles in here a lot a lot more better and I'm sure I will uh, go to the Harbor Freight or someplace and I'll get a set of uh, uh, 9 or 8 or 10 inch tires whatever uh, this thing came with and we'll be able to get those on there and be like brand new. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to do possibly is make some sort of a catch-all box very similar to the cart that, uh, that I had before and maybe that's going to hold the cutting torch, miscellaneous tips, spark lighter and stuff like that. So. Anyways, I'm really looking forward to getting started on this project. It's going to be a big improvement to the shop for me because I don't really have a place for those bottles. I'm constantly moving them around from one place to the other. It's going to make things a lot more easier. Let's get started on today's video. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, cut off these little uh, uh, eighth inch thick by maybe one inch uh, straps, uh, flat bar stock that was uh, attached to the to the uh, hand truck here. You know, they might have had some sort of um, rubber protecting deal on it to maybe help with uh, moving furniture. I I've seen those before in the past, but uh, nevertheless, I didn't need them in, you know, on this particular cart, so I, I needed to get those cut off. And as soon as I got those cut off, we ground everything nice and flat. So the first thing I want to do is get some bottle separators, if you will. So I'm just cleaning off the area of the paint right here, uh, one on either side and one in the middle. And I've cut these out on my plasma table. This is just some eighth inch thick uh, material right here that uh, is just going to separate the, uh, the bottles and keep them from coming off the cart. So once I... Uh, just got everything ground off, a little bit of uh, tuning and sanding right here, and just tack these things into place right here. And I don't need a lot of uh, a lot of weld right here. You know, I've just put maybe uh, you know one inch long beads every uh, couple of inches. That's all you really need. There's no need to weld everything completely solid all the way out. There's just not going to be any kind of structural value here. The only thing I'm trying to do here is is to keep the bottles from from sliding off the cart. So now this is the uh, the uh, actual uh, bracketry that's going to be holding the bottles in um, on the lower part and the upper part. Now I'm using this similar design from the existing uh, cart that I have right here. This is just some two inch by three sixteenths flat bar stock 
once I got everything all measured out, took it over there to the uh, to the press and uh, and got everything all bent in, into shape. Now this is some axle, uh, some eight eight inch by eighth inch thick. That's kind of hard to say. Uh, round tubing that I had left over from a project right here, and uh, this is what I'm going to be using to to actually hold the bottles in place. So uh, I use this on on a couple of torch lead holders from previous carts that I've made, and and they seem to work pretty good. So it's the same principle type of thing that we're using right here. I'm using the HTP 875SC plasma cutter here. This is the handheld version. This thing uh, works uh, really well, nice and clean. This little wax pencil right here. Look at how clean that thing works. Uh, of course, the metal was a little hot, so it uh, melted its way right on there, but uh, it makes for some pretty good markers. Just cut these things in half, and you uh, see the idea here. These are going to kind of hold the, the, the tanks in place. One thing that here that I... That I struggled with was getting the dross off this and getting everything uh, where I wanted it nice and smooth. Uh, I first thought I would take it over to the Burr King, clean it up that way. You know, I put a nice fresh belt on here. Everything was nice and sharp. But, you know, because of the odd shape and design uh, of this curvature of this plate, it was just hard to do that. So I took it over to the vise, got a flap disc on a grinder, and even that was kind of a struggle. And then I clamped it to my welding table, and just the angles and everything getting in there to get it all done was uh, was a bit of a challenge. But uh, ultimately, you know, got all four pieces done, and there they are. You know, just some final uh, uh, cleaning up on the Burr King right here, and it's time to start uh, placing these things. What I want to do right here is right, like you can see that that's going to hold the uh, tank together, and uh, and then this is some separators that. That I'm going to put between uh, the two uh, curved pieces of tubing right there, and this is going to actually hold the chain, you know, in place for both sides, top and bottom. You know, a little quarter inch drill, really close to the edge. Uh, I've got a quick link that's going to be going in there, and I just wanted to be sure that uh, everything was going to be be able to fit pretty good. You can see that that's the plan right there. Once everything was adjusted properly, I went ahead and just tacked everything into place. You know, when you're doing stuff like this, you know, it's a good idea to, to tack everything into place to be sure everything is nice and square before you go ahead and weld everything out. You know, I've learned this the hard way over the years. You know, I, you know, starting out, I just started welding and welding and welding and, you know, things get tweaked. But, uh, you know, you get everything tacked into place, everything stays where it needs to be, then you can go ahead and, and weld it all out. So that's what I did right here. So everything is done. This is here. Um, uh, a quarter inch uh, grinding wheel that I'm just cutting a groove um, on either side of this and this is what the chain is going to be sitting in. Um, it's some pretty thick chain so I want it, it needs to be able to slide in there and so this is a, a nice uh, quarter inch wide at least maybe more uh, groove on the inside. Then just uh, took the old flap disc and we're going to clean things up a little bit. All right we're just tacking these things into place. You see I got a couple of two by fours that helped me hold it nice and flat and and that was my base to go ahead and get the top piece all uh, leveled from as well. Once I got everything where it needed to be I did everything I could to get in there. Some of these places kind of awkward to weld. This uh, what obviously is the easy part right here but I wanted to get a couple welds on the inside and was able to get that done. This right here is the last piece that I had, and I'm trying to think of a good way to have the hose reel on this, and I thought, well, why not just use the remnants of this, the last little piece of this 8-inch tubing that I have. Uh, this was kind of wide here. It's about, uh, I don't know, three and a half inches wide, and it's kind of perfect. The hose is about 25 feet long, and, uh, you know, it's a pretty lengthy piece of hose, and I just wanted to be sure that it was wide enough to be able to support it. Now these are the ears that I'm going to put on there. Um, now I did this similar to the other torch lead holders that I've done on my previous carts, uh, but I only cut them about two inches tall. These are about four and a half inches tall. Uh, I had a little bit of problem with my 25 foot hose uh, not staying on the torch lead, so I wanted to be sure that these right here were going to be tall enough and I wasn't going to have any issues with uh, the hose wanting to fall off. Just cleaning everything up, rounding everything up on the Burking, you know, uh, that nice sharp blade cuts everything like butter. Now this may not be the safest uh, uh, way to do this, but uh, it's worked out perfectly. This is uh, the bottom wheel of the Burr King right here. I did need to remove some metal of this uh, on this particular, on these ears, so they'll fit on the radius part of the tubing. 
and uh, this worked out really good. And then uh, two ears there on the back, and then three in the front. And I've got them spaced, uh, uh, staggered, so they're not stacked up on top of each other. Again, I just wanted to tack everything into place. Uh, everything stayed nice and straight, and just got some welds on there. And operating off the HTP Pro Pulse 200 right here, using some 30,000 wires. What I have in that machine all the time works really well. And so you see, I'm just, uh, you know putting those welds in there and then once I did that I wanted to take the grinder and kind of soften up all the all the welds and the edges I just didn't want any uh, chance of the hose uh, hanging up on any sharp edges of the weld so that's all I was doing just cleaning this up and then once I decided the location or where it was going to go uh, I just tacked it into place and uh, I was really pleased the way that uh, that uh, this turned out on this right here uh, I you know I've just built things as I go and you just kind of hope that things work out the way you're hoping and in this case this is pretty good. This is what I was talking about uh, you know trying to get in different angles to get things welded in there but ultimately uh, I got it done. Now I talked about uh, possibly making some sort of a catch-all box for this. Uh, well I decided against that you know I'm gonna go ahead for for a couple of the couple of uh, you know the t tips I have and the torches that I have uh, I don't plan on this thing uh, leaving my shop, so I'll put those in the drawer. But what I am going to make right here is a couple of uh, spark lighter holders. I thought that uh, this would be kind of compact. Uh, I happen to have this uh, rectangular tubing sitting around and it's perfect size uh, to hold the spark lighters. And I thought it would be a great idea to, uh, to put one on either side. And like I say, they don't stick out. It's not going to be a problem. The, the, car, the, uh, the box I talked about was going to be in the way of the hose reel holder anyway and kind of an awkward uh, place. I didn't really have any room for it. So this is the best uh, option for me. They're tucked in there really nice and uh, actually look pretty good. I'm just going to clamp them on either side right here on the top part of the rack. And you can see I'm talking about the kind of just conform to the rack, saying they're nice and clean, nice and tight. And they look pretty good right there. And then the spark lighters, they fit right in. And there it is, just before paint, uh, I got everything just the way I want it. And uh, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. I'm pretty pleased the way it turned out so far. And there's the finished product after I got some Harbor Freight tires and wheels for it. I got the chain on it, got a nice coat of paint. And there it is, complete. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. The thing actually worked uh, just the way I was hoping it would be. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my website at jimbosgarage.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.